wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ad-da'i ila ridwani allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ikhwanihi my dear brother and sister in islam alhamdulillah all praise to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, this is our first uh, lesson after eid yeah, and before everything i would like to say one more time taqabbalallahu minna wa minkum salih al-a'mal may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strength our iman and our taqwa inshallah uh, as requested by uh, the masjid uh, inshallah uh, we will uh, talk about uh, performing hajj about the hajj and umrah uh, because we know uh, alhamdulillah we just entered a month of the hijjah which is in this month uh, our brothers and sisters they are performing hajj so it's very important for us to uh, have knowledge about hajj and umrah and this knowledge about hajj and umrah it's not only uh, for people who is going to perform al hajj only but for everyone else because if we have ilm, if we have knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise our level in front of Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَرْفَعِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ درجات. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise the level, the status for who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for who has knowledge in Islam. So this is very important for us. Yeah, even we know that we are not going to performing Hajj this year, but by learning, yeah, and uh, acknowledge how to perform Hajj, inshallah, this is gonna be the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call us next year or in the future, inshallah. Before we start talking about how to perform Hajj, yeah, as we know that. Performing Hajj is one of the biggest worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam. Prophet said, Bunyal Islam wa ala khams. That is Islam built yeah, from five things. And one of that is Wal Hajj. Wa Hajj baytillahi al haram. Performing Hajj in ten, yeah, to go to Mecca and Medina to perform Al Hajj. So there are some things that we have to know as we worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There are some things that we have to prepare before we are performing this, yeah, big worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The first one is that we have to know that we have to purify our intention. So I will read from the book. Yeah. This book is written by uh, one of our teacher when I was studying uh, Islamic University of Medina. And this book is very simple for everyone, yeah, for a beginner. So uh, inshallah, we will take benefit from this book. So the Sheikh Rahimallah, uh, Hafidullah said, أهم ما يجب أن يكون عليه الناس في حجه وعمرته أن يخلص عمله لله. The most important things that whoever is performing Hajj and Umrah is they have to purify their intention only for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We have to look at ourselves. What's the main reason we are going to do Hajj and Umrah? Is it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? or we are performing Hajj and Umrah to show off to the others or to make everyone or to make the others call us with like Hajj. Yeah, Hajj. Because some people, they go to Mecca and Medina performing Hajj. So when they come back to their country, people will respect them more. That's their intention. So we have to look at ourselves. We have to make our intention is pure only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all our actions is depend on our intention. 
Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Inna mal a'malu binniyat." That all the action is depend on the intention. Wa inna malikul imriin manawa. And everyone will get depend or or based on their intention. If our intention is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we will get the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If our intention is to yeah amaze anyone, amaze our friends, amaze uh, the others, we will get that in dunya, in this world, but we will get nothing when we meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the day after. So the first one that we have to really, really remember and keep remember this, yeah, and this also yeah works in any other worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, any other ibadah. We have to purify yeah, our intention only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one, أَنْ يَجْتَهِدَ الْحَجْ فِي مَعْرِفَةِ الْأَحْكَامِ الْحَجْ وَالْعُمْرَةِ لِيُؤَدِّيهِمَا عَلَى دَصِيرَةِ That anyone is performing hajj and umrah, they have to yeah, do their best to know about Hajj and Umrah. And what we do now, Alhamdulillah, is the way to know how to perform Hajj and Umrah. Listening the lecture, asking the scholars. Yeah. This is the way to know how to perform Hajj and Umrah. Because when someone performing Hajj and Umrah without knowledge, that means they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without basirah. We need knowledge, and the best knowledge is we try to do our Hajj and Umrah as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed his Hajj and his Umrah. Even Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in his Hadith, "Khudu anni manasikakum." Take from me your way to perform Hajj and and Umrah. So the second point is we have to learn, study about how to perform Hajj and Umrah. And also, yeah, part of this uh, point is we have to be careful to choose our travel agent that will bring us to do Hajj and Umrah. Choose travel agent yeah, that is caring with the people who is going with them by teaching them and try to make them yeah, perform Hajj and Umrah with the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because some travel agent, yeah, they just do business. So they don't care about the, yeah, their customers or people who is going Hajj with them. Is their Hajj is correct or not, they don't care. As long these people is going to Hajj, is going to Mecca and Medina, finish yeah, the season of Hajj and come back to, yeah, their country, that's it. They think they have done their duty. But the good, yeah, the triple agent, yeah, is that caring with the customer, with yeah, bringing them to perform Hajj and Umrah based uh, or according to the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And inshallah, we will uh, explain about some pillars and obligatory action that everyone must fulfill it yeah, while performing Hajj and Umrah. Because why, when they miss one of these, their Hajj yeah, sadly could be not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the importance of learning how to perform Hajj and, and Umrah. Five. Next one is أن يكون معه في سفره ما يحتاج إليه من المال حتى لا يحتاج إلى ما عند الناس. So whoever performing Hajj and Umrah, he has to yeah prepare, make preparation, yeah have enough saving, yeah to be brought to Mecca and Medina. So they yeah won't be like. If they don't have any setting or they don't bring any preparation and just go to Makkah and Medina yeah, and they lost, they, they finish their setting in there, what they're going to do? They will ask everyone else. They will they will make uh, anyone else yeah, uh, 
memberatkan. Oh, you said memberatkan. Burden. Burden. It become a burden to to, to 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 the others. So we try to avoid this. We are going to Makkah and Madinah to worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So we have to make sure that we have enough preparation. Yeah, that's number number three. The next one, and it's also very important. We have to know that we are going to Makkah and Madinah to perform, yeah, Hajj, one of the pillar of Islam. We are going there to perform, yeah, something big, something very big in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So it's not only how to perform that kind of worship, but we have to dress ourselves with the good manner. And yet, halla bil akhlaqil karima, because we will we will be in the sacred land, we will be in the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we will be in front of Kaaba, we will be in the land of Arafah, we will be in Mina, we will be in Muzdalifah, the sacred places that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the other prophets before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they used to do Hajj in there. So we have to come yeah, to Mecca and Medina. Dress with the, be- the with beautiful manner, good manners. Yeah, we show our manner, Islamic manner, akhlaqul karima. Yeah, because some people they go there and then they fight with each other. Yeah, they 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 show bad deeds, and it is against what Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam want us to do when we are in Makkah and and Madinah. And we have to know that sacred land. Anything good deeds we perform in that, Allah will multiply the reward. And the other side, in the sacred line, land, if we perform something bad in sacred land, Allah Subhanahu wa will multiply the punishment, the sin. So by knowing and remembering this, inshallah, we try to keep ourselves in the good manners. Yeah, be patient. We will meet a lot, of, so many people with uh, from the other countries. So many characters, yeah. So we have to be patient because we all going there as the brothers, yeah, answering the calls from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We are the guests of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Imagine if you are become a guest in someone's house, and you meet with the other guests. Are you try to perform, uh, show good manners, or you will show your bad manners in someone else's house? Imagine if you are in the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. The next one. Yeah. This is the points that we have to know before we are performing Hajj and Umrah. Next one is an yashtagila bi dhikri wa du'ai wa istighfar wa yahfadu lisanahu illa min al kalam bil khair. We have to keep. Yeah. Yeah. Or we have to protect our tongue. From bad talk, we have to fill our time with zikr, remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, du'a, yeah. reciting du'a. We have to know that we are in sacred land, the place that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will answer any 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 anyone who asks Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So fill our time yeah, with this kind of ibadah. Don't let ourselves yeah, talk something has no benefit because some people when they are performing Hajj and Umrah they will meet the other friends yeah and go together with the travel agent yeah in the hotel in the camp Mina and Muzdalifah so they spend their time waste their time just to talk about their business what happened in their country yeah about their family Forget about that. Yeah, we, we we can do that after finishing Hajj and Umrah. That time, the very limit time, because some of us only has twenty eight days, maybe one month. Some travel, they have only two weeks to perform Hajj and Umrah. So this limit time, a limited time, we have to fill the time with the zikr, du'a, and istighfar, asking forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, especially in the day of Arafah. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, yeah, admit that whoever asking forgiveness from Him, He will forgive, yeah, all the sins. 
طيب ماي برذر ماي برذر سيستم ان اسلام ذا نيكست وان از ان يحذر ايذاء غيره بقول او فعل اتس اولسو فيري امبورتنت اند وي ويل سي ذيس ذيس ثينجز يا وين وي ار بيرفورمينج حج ان عمره سام بيبول دي دي انتيميديت اذرز with their speech their talk or may, or maybe with their action they are they never, they never care with the others yeah they do harm yeah they hurt the others so we have to avoid this as i said sacred land will multiply whatever you done there you do good good things allah will multiply the the rewards If you do bad things, Allah will multiply the the sins. Five. Next talk is we are performing Hajj and Umrah. What makes us performing Hajj and Umrah? Of course, because we know the reward. Yeah. Of course, after we know that Hajj or Umrah, Hajj especially, yeah, is wajib, yeah, obligatory. action from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to to do it if we are able to do it but after that of course someone is performing Hajj al-Murad because he knows the reward behind Hajj like someone yeah working why you work because I know my company will pay me they will give my salary I will get the money if I work in that place that's why I work If they don't pay me nothing, I wouldn't. I, I will not work in that place. Same as Hajj. Someone perform Hajj, of course, because he knows the rewards behind that worship. And what's the reward of Hajj? That Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, yeah, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Hadith, Al Umrah ila Al Umrah kafarat lima bainahuma. that umrah one umrah to the other umrah will remove the sin in between these two umrah let's say you perform umrah this month and then you perform the umrah a year after that so from now until next year your second umrah inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your sins in between each umrah really big reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easy job with with big reward and then prophet said wal hajj al mabrur laysa lahu jazaa'un illa al jannah and hajj mabrur the hajj that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laysa lahu laysa lahu jazaa'un illa al jannah there is no reward yeah, work for someone get hajj mabrur illa jannah except he will enter enter the paradise allah will put him in the heaven allah will put him in jannah this is the reward for hajj mabrur there is other reward as well someone performing hajj allah will remove all his sins so he will when he finish his hajj he will come back to his country as the day his mother is giving birth to him prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man hajj al bayta wa lam yarfuth wa lam yafsuq raja'a ila baytihi ka yawmi waladathu ummuhu whoever performing hajj wa lam yarfuth and he has yeah no sexual relation wa lam yafsuq and he doesn't do any sin while performing hajj and umrah raja'a ila baytihi he will come back to his house ka yawmi waladathu ummuhu as the day his mother is giving birth to him when someone yeah when when the mother giving birth yeah to a baby the baby has sin or not no pure clean it's like white paper nothing that's our condition if our hajj mabrur so how to get hajj which is mabrur 
from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is our first step, learning the truth way, the correct way to perform Hajj and Umrah. Based the Sunnah of, of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, there are so many different opinion, different opinion according to the yeah Hadith, according to the action of Sahaba, based on the different opinion of the Madhahib, Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, and Hanbali. But yeah, Inshallah, I will try to explain what I see. It's yeah, inshallah correct. But if any brothers has different opinion, yeah, as long as according to the hadith, feel free to do that. Yeah, that the difference is only in the small things, but in the major things of Hajj and Umrah, Alhamdulillah, we are we have agreement in between the the madhab, inshallah. But my brother is in Islam. That's the reward. Yeah, behind Hajj and Umrah, Allah will forgive our sin, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will put us in His Jannah. Next one, yeah, of course, this Hajj session we couldn't do this in one, yeah, majlis in one session. Anyone finish from one session? Inshallah, once he start his car, he will forget everything. Yeah. We explain the message. That's why I make it at least three or could be four session. So our first session, like tonight, we just explain about the the benefit of Hajj, yeah, the things that very important before everyone performing Hajj, and we will explain about the pillar and an obligatory action and the Sunnah of Hajj. Yeah. And before explain of this, yeah. There are three kinds of Hajj, inshallah, as everyone already knew. There are three kinds of Hajj. Hajj Ifrat, Hajj Qiran, and Hajj Tamattu. And most and the more majority of us yeah, performing Hajj Tamattu. So, according to Hajj Tamattu, our explanation about Hajj session is will be about Hajj Tamattu. Because Hajj Ifrat, it's only someone performing Hajj and that's it finish. Only Hajj without any Umrah. He came to Makkah straight doing Hajj and finished from Hajj, that's it. That's Hajj Ifrat. Hajj Qiran, he is combining between Umrah and Hajj and didn't really release himself from Ihram state until he finished his Hajj. So he came and then performed Umrah. When he finished doing tawaf and sa'i, he didn't release himself from ihram state. He just stay in that state until he start performing hajj. When he finished his hajj, then he released from ihram state by shaping or cutting his hair. That's qiran. But tamattu is his performing umrah and finish release himself from umrah by shaping or cutting his hair. And then after that, he start to entering another yeah, session of Hajj, entering Ihram state when he is performing Hajj. So this is Tamat Tamatu, and our explanation, inshallah, will be about Hajj Tamatu. Okay. The pillars of Hajj, yeah, or the Rukun of Hajj, pillars or Rukun. We need to. Yeah, uh, recognize the the mustalah, yeah, the words of scholars when they divide between arkan pillars, wajib obligatory actions, and sunnah. So pillar of Hajj or arkan rukun, the pillars of Hajj, the things that we have to fulfill it without any excuse. If you miss one of the pillars, your Hajj is allowed. Your Hajj is unacceptable obligatory actions or wajib hajj there are so many things of wajib hajj that you also have to fulfill it you have to do it but let's say if you miss yeah, or you forget to to do it your hajj will be still valid inshallah but you will get fine 
you have to pay the penalty. Or as we know, with dam. And so all the explanation, the details will come once we talk about dam. Sunnah of Hajj, that's something that will complete your Hajj. You do it, it will increase your reward. But you miss or you just uh, don't want to do it, let's say, it will give nothing, yeah. But this Sunnah of Hajj, yeah, we try to do it all the Sunnah to make our Hajj perfect in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But pillar of Hajj, so pillar, this pillar, there is no excuse, you have to do it. The first one is, sorry, we, we because we talk about uh, Hajj Tamatur, so we, we will talk about Umrah first. So the pillars of Umrah, there are three pillars of Umrah. Ihram is entering Ihram state, as you entering the Salah with Takbir. When someone performing Salah, he will recite Allahu Akbar. That means he is entering Salah by saying Allahu Akbar. It doesn't matter you raise your hand or not, but when you say Allahu Akbar, that means you are entering your Salah. When someone say Labbaik Allahumma Umratan, that's called Talbiyah. When you say that, that means you are entering Ihram. You are entering your Umrah or you are entering your Hajj. After you say that, you realize, now I'm in Umrah. So there are some things, so many things that it's prohibited to me to do it because I already said my Talbiyah. As when you say Allah Akbar, you know that you are in Salah, you are not allowed to talk, you are not allowed to eat, you are not allowed to drink, you are not allowed to play with your phone while you are performing Salah. Same as when you are entering your Umrah, when you say Labaik Allahumma Umratan, you entering your Umrah, there are so many things, inshallah, we will explain about that, that is prohibited to you. So saying Labaik Allahumma Umratan, this is one of the pillar of Umrah. You can't just wear the uh, ihram, the, the garment, the white garment, and go to Makkah, and you didn't say Labaik Allahumma Umratan. It's just like when you're standing here and you start, you think you are starting your salah, but you didn't say Allahu Akbar. Same things. Imagine this is will, will help you to understand. Yeah. So the first pillar of Umrah is Ihram, entering the Ihram state. The second one is Tawaf. Tawaf is circumambulation, going anti clockwise side of the Kaaba. So clockwise is from 12 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and until 12. So tawaf is anti-clockwise. Imagine from 12, uh, 12, 11, 10, 9, so anti-clockwise. Seven times. So in Umrah, tawaf is pillar. If you do Umrah, you say la Allahumma umratan, and then you are not performing tawaf, you go to Makkah, entering Masjid al-Haram, straight away, performing sa'i, bayna safa wal marwah, Without any tawaf, your umrah is allowed. So the second pillar of umrah is tawaf. If you have uh, paper and then you uh, make notes, it will help a lot there. Yeah? So the pillars of umrah, the second pillar is tawaf, circumambulation, seven times. How to perform tawaf? Inshallah, the talk will, will come be patient, inshallah. The last one. Yeah, the pillar of Umrah is Asai. It's going yeah, seven times from Sofa to Marwa to Sofa to Marwa, Sofa Marwa, yeah, and it will be finished in Marwa Hill. So there are two hills. So for anyone yeah, uh, never uh, going to Makkah and Medina, don't, imag don't uh, imagine that Sofa and Marwa is like Kalamanda or Lesbordi with the hill, like nature. Nah, it's inside the masjid now with building, with ceramic, with, yeah, very beautiful and very modern. Yeah. But we, we still uh, see some stone. Yeah, the government of Saudi Arabia, they still leave uh, the, the, the actual stone from the Sofa and Marwa. So people will, uh, they, they, they can feel. 
ya how like they are climbing the hill uh, sofa and and marwah so this is three pillars of hajj uh, sorry this is the three pillars of rom umrah and then we finish from umrah this is hajj tamattu we wait until we are uh, starting the hajj at the day 8 of dhul dhul hijjah because when someone performing hajj tamattu yeah he is allowed to do the umrah yeah even in the beginning of month of the hijjah even in the end of the month of dhul qa'dah because ashhur al hajj yeah the month of hajj yeah, it's already start from month of dhul qa'dah so you are allowed to do your umrah tamattu part of your hajj tamattu at the mid of the dhul qa'dah and then you go to Mecca and just stay there as normal as as a normal person in Mecca. Go to masjid with the normal clothes, yeah. Just do whatever you want. You do business in there, yeah. It's up to you, yeah. And then once the day eight of the Hijjah comes, then you start your Hajj. So now we have to know what's the pillar of Hajj. The pillar of Hajj. The pillar of Hajj, same as the pillar of Umrah, only with one addition, additional, is Wukuf in Arafah, standing in Arafah. Even Prophet Sallallahu clearly said in his hadith, his statement, Al-Hajju Arafah. Hajj is standing in Arafah. If we miss the day 9 of the Hijjah, we didn't go to Arafah to stay there for a while, yeah, for some time. We will explain how long we have to stay in Arafah. We just skip that day, for example. Our Hajj is this, this cloud. So basically, the pillars of Hajj and Umrah is same, yeah. Ihram entering the Ihram state, and then Tawaf uh, at Kaaba, circumambulation seven times, anti-clockwise. And Sa'i, yeah. And the last one for Hajj is Tawaf, standing at, at Arafah. Right, that's the pillars. Now, obligatory of Hajj. Wajibatul Hajj wal Umrah hiya allati yajibu al-idiyanu biha. That obligatory action in Hajj and Umrah, as I said before, it's something that we have to do it. Wa illam yu'ta biha jibir bidam. If you, yeah, decide to I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's up to you, but you have to pay the penalty. You have to pay the fine. Yeah, the dam. Yeah, the dam is with slaughtering the the animal. Or there are so many options if you can afford to slaughter the the animal. Inshallah, we will explain that uh, next lesson. Like the first one, the wajib of Hajj. Yeah, is. The pillar is entering the ihram by saying la baik Allahumma umratan or la baik Allahumma hajjan entering the ihram. Wajib, the obligatory action is entering the ihram from appropriate place. From the places that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa already yeah, decide. As uh, mentioned in the hadith, yeah, from Ahlul Madinah, from the Hulayfa or anyone else, yeah, recognize by Deir Ali. Yeah. It's like 20 or 25 kilometers from the uh, city of Medina. From Ahlul Yaman, people from Yaman, when they are going to Makkah, going north, they have to entering their ihram, saying La Baik Allahumma Umratan, from Yalamlam, the place called Yalamlam. Yeah. And from Iraq, yeah. And also from uh, Sham, yeah, they all they all have their own, yeah. Uh, let's say starting place, yeah, starting line that you have to say your talbiya from there. And we from Australia usually we are going to Medina first before we are going to Makkah. That's why we have to, yeah, know which travel we use what is their program 
where are we going first? Are we going straight to Makkah and then go to Medina after that? Or are we going to Medina first or are we going to Makkah after that? If we go to Makkah first, that means we go to Makkah and straight doing do doing the Umrah. Then we have to do the Talbiyah from the inside the plane. Some people they go to Jeddah, yeah, which is they already pass Yalam Lam because we are going through the Yemen. Yeah. Or maybe some people they are going from uh, with with uh, Etihad or uh, Emirates airline from Dubai. They will pass Yemen. They are supposed to recite the Talbiyah from Yalam, Yalam Lam, place called Yalam Lam. Usually the the pilot from the flight they yeah uh, declare, yeah they declare to the passengers oh we are we will pass uh, we will be at Yalam Lam so for. Anyone who wants to recite the Talbiyah, please recite it. Some people, they don't know. They just go and then, yeah, arrive in Jeddah. And then they just start to see the Talbiyah from Jeddah. Their Hajj still valid. I didn't see their Hajj not valid. But they miss one of oblig obligatory action of Hajj. And they have to pay the dam. Because they didn't enter the Ihram from the appropriate place that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already for us. That's the first wajib. First wajib. The second one, al al awit taqsir. Shaving or cutting your hair after you finish from Umrah or from, from Hajj. Some people, they, they said, oh, I don't want to cut any of my hair because my hair is too good or for any reason. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because we're supposed to be happy when we are shaving or we cutting our hair. Yeah, because whatever we see in the mirror, it's also based on our intention. We see in the mirrors, oh, mashallah, alhamdulillah, Allah rewards me with, Allah give me ni'mah, yeah, with uh, this uh, hajj and umrah, alhamdulillah. Some people, they don't want to cut the head. Yes, yeah, it's up to them, but they have to pay the, the penalty, the dam. Yeah. This is the second wajib. Yes. Some people cut just... Some yes, that's, that's as, I say, as I said, there are different uh, opinion uh, based on, on my lahib, yeah. But what I mean here, people is not cutting anything at all. Yeah. They cut some of the hair, it's according to the uh, Madhab Shafi'i, it's a law, yeah. It is, uh, uh, it's part of the cutting of hair, even only just one or two pieces of hair, yeah. It's, the opinion but what i mean here people avoid to cut anything from his hair yes but he has to pay the penalty the third one is al wuquf bi arafa ila ghurub al shams liman waqafa biha naharan standing in arafa until sunset some people they decide to leave arafa to go to musdalifah some people they might be still confused to start talk about Arafah, Muzdalifah because these places yeah some of us never heard that before it's like when you talk to your family who is going to visit Perth for first time and then you talk about Fremantle, Rockingham what's Fremantle? what's Rockingham? I never heard about that before and that's why I said yeah this had a lesson we cannot make it in one session need three or four so, one of the obligatory actions of Hajj is standing in Arafah until sunset. Because the, the correct things, the correct one is after sunset, then we are moving to staying overnight night in Musdalifah, camping in Musdalifah. Some people, they don't want to be in very crowded because everyone moves in the same time after sunset. They leave Arafah after Asar. Some people. Yes, but they have to pay penalty. And I try to make it very, very simple, inshallah. I, I, I hope brothers uh, and sisters understood, inshallah. It's really hard, actually, because when someone never uh, uh, performed Hajj before, yeah, still confused with the places or with the word uh, wukuf, inshallah. Yeah, as long as we try to get as much 
as we can from this knowledge, yeah. And we, when we go there, then we realize, oh, this is what Ustaz mean. Going to mean uh, Sofa Marwa. It's easier when we are already in there. Next, wajib obligatory action of Hajj is Romiu Jamaratul Aqabah Yawman Nahar. Stoning, uh, throwing the stone to the uh, Jamarat, yeah. Jumratul Aqabah, only the biggest one, the third one, because there are three Jamarat. Sugra, Wusta, Aqabah, or Kubra. The small one, it's not the small one, the first one, second one, and then the, the last one. At the day 10, after we are staying overnight at Muzdalifah, and after Subuh, we are moving to Mina to stoning, throw the stone. At this day, at the day 10 of the Hijjah, while everyone else in the other part of the world celebrating Eid al-Abha, we are moving to Mina to throw the stone. But on this day, we are only need to throw the, the biggest one, the last one. Some people, they skip this. They just want to go straight to, straight away to Masjid al-Haram to do Tawaf Ifadah as the pillar of Hajj. As I said, Tawaf, pillar of Hajj. They just want to go there. They avoid the crowded. Yeah. Yes, but they have to pay penalty because they miss, they skip the stoning, throwing the, the Jamarat. This is the day of them because the day of 11, 12 or 13, we also throwing the Jamarat, stoning, throw the stone. But on the day of 11, 12 and 13, we have to throw all the Jamarat, three, all the Jamarat. Sugro, the smallest one, Wusta, the middle one, and Kubro, the biggest, the biggest one. Next one, Al Mabit Bimina Layali Amla Ayami Tashirat Athalat Il Mutakhirin. Also, obligatory action in Hajj is staying overnight in Mina at the day of Tashriq, day 11, 12, and 13. Some people they don't want to stay in Mina because. Uh, their uh, hotel at Aziziyah, let's say, yeah. and Aziziyah is not part of the Mina. Yes, they are not. Or because Jamarat is too far from their camp in Mina, and their hotel in Aziziyah is much closer to the Jamarat, and they are old people, for example, elder, yeah, they can't uh, afford to walk because we can't yeah, go from our camp to through Jamarat with bus or with taxi, Uber, or we have to walk. That's why this Hajj is kind of jihad because we are not only spend our money, we also spend our energy, our time, our fishing, our emotional, our mental. We leave our family. Yeah, it's not easy. That's why Allah reward us, reward us with the huge reward. Yeah. So if you yeah, decide to not stay overnight at Mina at the day of Tashri. Yes, but you have to pay penalty. But some opinion they said, oh, it's not obligatory action of Hajj. Yeah, uh, it's just the Sunnah of Hajj, as, as I said, according to different opinion uh, uh, between the scholars. But I have rules for myself personally. If there are two different opinion one opinion said do it and one opinion said don't do it or we you don't have to do it i prefer just to do it first of all because it's nothing to lose you just do it why you have why you have to choose not to do it just do it some people when they decide to not do not to do it based on the opinion that he choose when he come back to his country and he realized the correct opinion is we have to do it and he will regret for the rest of his life because he will think, oh, I might be, cannot come back again to perform Hajj because it's, I have to uh, save my money for 20 years to go to Hajj. Now I don't have any, op I, any opportunity to come back there again and I miss that action because I choose. So, I don't want to talk about the different opinion, but my rules for myself, if you found two different opinions in front of you, one of them said, do it, and one of them said, you don't have to do it, 
better just do it nothing to lose just extra energy and if you do it Allah will reward you faman ya'mal min qala dharratin khayran yara and whoever performing even very very small deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with that and the last one is tawaful wada tawaf wada is circumambulation farewell tawaf farewell before you leaving makkah and then you just leave makkah and you finish your hajj uh, hajj session yeah, your hajj uh, season sorry tawaf farewell yeah is obligatory action action of hajj if you decide to not do it that's fine but you are uh, you have to pay the the dam the penalty but that's all the pillars and the wajib obligatory action of uh, hajj and the sunnah of hajj is uh, it's a lot yeah i think uh, probably this is enough for tonight inshallah next week our talk gonna be the sunnah of hajj and we will talk about the umrah yeah so we will finish from the umrah next week and then a week after we will talk about the whole hajj uh the, the whole hajj and then the last one inshallah then we are we are trying to do a practice yeah by how to wearing the ihram inshallah we'll to try to provide the garment how to wear the ihram and then how to uh we we just put this as as if it's a kaaba and then we do circumambulation we have to acknowledge which one is rukun yamani because from you rukun yamani side until the uh, black stone hajar aswad side we have to recite uh, one kind of recitation special recitation yeah so we try to practice this that it will give uh, more uh, imagination to uh, brother and sister inshallah so i think this is from me tonight Inshallah, I'll see you again next week. I close this message. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.